Hello, my name is Ross Tregenza. I am a sound designer and composer uh, for video games. I've been in the industry for 20-ish years now, um, working in-house at different studios on lots and lots of games, like um, uh, Time Splitters games, uh, Crisis games, uh, Gears of War, Alien vs. Predator, Star Citizen, Team Sonic Racing, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Cyberpunk, Wolfenstein, Deathloop, lots and lots of games, lots and lots and lots and lots of games. Um, some of those as composer, some of them as sound designer, very often on uh, I worked on both of those things. Um, something I've always thought people would presume is very easy to do and really isn't is UI sounds as in user interface sounds um, that can be a lot of things but uh, when I'm saying this in particular I'm thinking about the first sounds that you encounter when you load the game like the bip 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 as you go through menus and um, clicking through cancels errors things are blocked all that kind of stuff um, you would think that stuff is easy. I mean, they're very small sounds uh, generally. They tend to be you know, like one second or less for each of those. You wouldn't believe how difficult it actually is to get them sounding right and combining the three core elements that um, I'll talk about in this video that I think uh, are like the secret ingredient for, for getting your UI sounds right. Um, I'm a big believer in learning by doing, so um, I think probably the easiest thing to do is if I just drop into Cubase, which is my uh, door of choice. That's what I do my sound design work in. Um, let's not get into that, the reasons why. I mean, well, we can. It's just because I've used it uh, for like 25 years uh, for music generally. So I just, I do my sound design in it as well, just because it's fast and I, I know the tool very well. doesn't matter which door you use, you use the one you like best. A lot of people like Reaper for sound design, um, but yeah, it, that's not important. <laughs> don't get, uh, don't get waylaid by thinking too much about the tools you're using. Just do some good work. That's, that's uh, what I always think is important. So let's do it. Let's get into Cubase um, and I'll show you the three ingredients that I think are important. And uh, I'll just work on the fly and see if we can um, get something going just as like a demo of how I tend to build my UI sounds. So let's get into Cubase. Ba -ba -da Boom. Don't know what that sound was. You can have that one for free. All righty then, here we go. So um, the important takeaway message here isn't going to be about designing any specific uh, one UI sound or about any specific uh, style, as in like horror, sci-fi, you know, thriller, sports game, etc., etc. This is really about just um, learning to combine these three elements that I'm going to talk about in a way that gives the player everything they need to understand what it is they're listening to and uh, what your intent is. Um, as well as it sounding satisfying and in line with the franchise. So um, what are we going to do? Let's say, let's do some sci-fi. So I'm going to drag in. Actually, I just did drag in. I've dragged it out again by mistake, but there we go. Um, I haven't listened to this yet, but it's it, this is um, just some like textural stuff. I think this is from, it's from a boom, uh, boomer, a company that make really cool samples that they have a really consistent level of quality with their work. If, if you buy one of their sample packs that are, very reasonably priced and stuff, you you just know that it's going to be uh, usable stuff. I'm not affiliated with them, by the way. I don't have any sponsorships or anything like that. Um, so if, if I express any opinions or stuff like that about software or samples and stuff, that's just my opinion. And it is just an opinion. So, you know, do your own research. Find the, the stuff that you like. Um, so before I dig in, we're going to make a few sci-fi sounds. But before I start, uh, the very important message here is the three elements to UI sounds that uh, you need to convey. So the first ingredient is uh, flavor. Um, and by that, I mean, if you're making a sci-fi game and let's say a serious sci-fi game or a lighthearted sci-fi game or a, uh, a Western game or that you need to obviously convey the mood of that game ui sounds along with you know the initial music and maybe some intro videos and stuff like that it'll be one of the first things that the people encounter when they play the game and even though it's a very subtle and small ingredient it's incredibly crucial to um setting the tone and giving it's like an amuse-bouche of what they're going to be um 
experiencing when they play the game. Take, for example, uh, Deathloop that uh, I dearly love. And um, the UI sounds for that are just perfect. They're like, made out of like funny little crispy bits of like feedback noise from amps that just, it's got that warm uh, like tube sound and it just gives you the sense of that, that uh, 60s and 70s rock and roll energy that Deathloop has. It's subtle and it also conveys all the uh, messages in a really clean way. So Ingredient one is flavor. Make sure that you're selling the story of your game and that the mood is on point for what the, yeah, the mood of the, the, the larger game and, and uh, the mood of everything. The second ingredient is feedback. Uh, this is, when I say feedback, I'm talking about the, the sensation, both in terms of what they hear and what they feel for the player. So you may be wanting to add like haptic components to this by um, you know, triggering tiny little taps on, uh, on the um, force feedback on the player's controller and stuff like that. But um, the thing is, you can have the flavor element, that first element I talked about, uh, that can be all well and good. But let's say you're making a spooky game and you've got a little like uh, spooky laugh when you move on to the next screen or something. If that's all you've got, and um, I see this a lot in people that haven't done uh, a lot of UI work. If, if that's all there is, it just doesn't feel rewarding and there's no sense of um, connection to it and um, there's no satisfaction, which is very important for UI sounds. So the second ingredient is feedback. Generally, what I tend to do is I'll bracket that um, first sound that I make, uh, the, the, the flavor part of it, with elements that I know are very rewarding and like, uh, have a lot of like tactile sense to them. So uh, that'll be something like low kick drums, high clicks, things like that. Um, and it just, uh, those mixed with the flavor element just really start to combine nicely. You'll see it, well, hopefully you'll see if it goes well when I make it in a minute. And the final element is language, uh, which is very difficult and takes a long time to learn. And by language, I mean just with a few beeps and boops, you need to convey to the player what the sound is they're hearing, what the importance of it is, and what it means in terms of the language of your UI. So does that sound mean we're progressing to the next page? Does it mean they can't click that thing? Does it mean they've unlocked a thing? Um, there, are, there are sort of general tropes in this area that just intuitively you'll, if you play around, you'll know. Yeah, like um, if you've got boop, boop, as a uh, can't go there and do ding, that sounds like you can do something. And then like, you know, sort of major chimes and diddly dings, things like that will sound like unlocks. I mean, you don't have to be that cheesy, um, but um, you just need to find that language and then apply that to, to the flavor element, you know, the first of the three ingredients. Um, and then on top of that, finally, there's just a mix thing. You need to figure out how big the sound is, uh, uh, in terms of like production and stuff like that. Generally, I'd say just keep it uh, nice and dynamic. Uh, don't make it too squashed and compressed because chances are this will be playing um, along with the, the, the front end music of the game, which some composers worked very hard on. And you really need to be like sympathetic with the sound of that music and make sure that it works together and it's not just stomping all over it and sounding ridiculous. So um, make sure there's some harmony between the music and the UI. All right, enough yabbering. Let's um, let's just try. I'll just try like um, I don't know uh, what should we do. Let's try a, a general UI click that's got a little bit of a sci-fi flavor. So what's this? That was nice there. Did you hear that? That was cool. Um, if you don't know this door, this this is Cubase. Oh, it says Cubase right there. Um, this is Cubase. Like I said, it's just what I use. Don't get hung up on the tech. Let's just um, think about the creative. There, that was cool. Um, uh, I work like a maniac in Cubase, so you'll just have to deal with that, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I kind of a bit freeform in the way I use it. To me, like, for this kind of work, this is just a canvas, and I'll throw things in, take them out again. Doesn't matter. A bit much. Yeah, that's interesting. It's got a little, I don't know, something about that sort of grimy bit to it that I quite like. Um, I've got... Um, uh, a few windows open on this other side here just because um, uh, space is a bit, uh, you know, there's not a lot of room on this screen. So, yeah, I'm sure you'll live. Um, okay, I like that, but it's now losing a bit of its tonal quality, but we don't want to go too long. Uh, I don't like that little bit at the beginning. 
so let's try that. So that's not bad. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's actually let's grab a bit more. See if there's anything we can use. Yeah, it's a bit. Uh, I'm just gonna search my sample library for. So I think this I think this was the Boom Neon something library. Uh, really really cool sort of sci-fi sounds. Good stuff. Very nice sort of grainy. Part of stuff. Oh, listen to that. That's cool. So let's. Okay, that's interesting. This might be a bit grand for just a clicking up and down sound, which is pretty much the 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 baseline smallest sound that you'll make. Let's just bring this down a bit and mix them again. Okay, that's not bad. Um, Let's stick a chorus on this, maybe. Let's just go find a chorus, shall we? Sorry, I keep going off mic. I keep forgetting I'm uh, not just talking to myself. <laughs> well, I am, technically. Okay. Um, there's another one. Let's just grab a little bit out of this, just for some detail. Okay. All right. Here we go. Uh, this is getting a bit much. Yeah, that's more like um, a progression sound. See, immediately, um, I mean, I don't know why that's like a progression sound or a, you know, press start to go to the main menu kind of sound, but it is. Uh, that's what I love about doing UI design. There, there's like a really intuitive language to UI uh, that has nothing to do with, you know, like verbal spoken language. It's very um, instinctive and um, it's a pleasure just to to find yourself asking why one sound sounds like error, another one sounds like progression, who knows, but there we go. So we're gonna use this as maybe, this This possibly is a bit too big for like a movement up and down sound, but uh, it could work nicely for like opening a sub window or something like that. So um, <clears throat> what we're gonna do, I think that'll do us just really, I mean, I'm rushing through this, normally I'd spend a day doing this and I'm trying to get this down to like 20 minutes or something, so. As a starting point, this is fine, I think. I'm just gonna bump that up. Um, let's hear that. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, and I'm gonna add these three to a, how do I do this again? Add group. So I'm just gonna make, um, uh, we'll call this flavor, spelt the British way. <laughs> um, I don't know why that's funny. It's a really lame joke. It's not even a joke. Uh, all right, so there's flavor, and I'm going to put a little reverb on this. I do this quite a lot with the flavor components of UI sounds because a little bit of reverb uh, on this um, part of the sound in UI is really nice, in, especially in like front-end stuff. It gives depth and color and a bit of warmth to the, and just a bit of um, l textural layering. Uh, and if you keep the reverb really low and just make sure that the clicky, boomy feedback elements uh, are uh, nice and sharp and dry. That contrast is really cool. So I'm gonna chuck on, uh, oh, I was gonna chuck on my favorite reverb, RC24, but I think Realm might be better because it's got like a sci-fi feel to it. Uh, both of these are by Native Instruments. I'm a huge fan of these reverbs. Um, they're very musical and very sound designy as well. They're very just very usable. I feel like those, yes, backwash grains. Let's try that. There you go, that's quite cool. Sounds like UI, doesn't it? I make that a little quicker, a little drier, bit of feedback, pre-delay down, let's try that. Try it a bit less. Yeah, see, isn't that cool? Um, so, I'm gonna save it, because it'll suck if it crashes now. Not the Cubase crashes a lot, but you know. Um, <clears throat> shouldn't jinx it by saying that. So, um, in terms of uh, language, I mean, this is kind of neutral sound, but that's fine. And in terms of flavor, subtle, but definitely there's there's an element of sci-fi to that, that that's quite clear. It's um, distinctly futuristic sounding. So, um, let's actually mute that now, and then let's drop in a few new tracks. And now I'm going to find a kick drum, I think. Uh, I've got like a big collection of kick drums from Leviathan, I think it is. I think that's the name of the collection as opposed to the um, uh, company. But if you look for Leviathan, yeah, there we go, just some kicks. 
and stuff. Let's find a nice kick. Yeah, if you search for it online, you'll find it, I'm sure. So let's find a... Oh, that, that one was nice. It's got like a little bit of... Uh, tiny bit of reverb in it itself, like a tiny little slap back. So um, <clears throat> this will initially be way too loud. The If you add things like kick drums, like percussive elements and stuff like that, then, um, uh, yeah, they need to be quite sort of subtle. Okay, um, right, we've got the kick, and now I'm going to find like a nice high click, I think. So I'm just going to search my libraries for like, I don't know, mouse click. Let's see what we can get. Anything? No, I'm just going to search for click then. We'll see what we get. That's a bit unpleasant on the ear. I'm going with that. Uh, right. Drag that in. So now, what we've got here, this is the bracketing that I talked about. So, I talked about? <laughs> What's that? Um, the bracketing, which is, uh, so we've got the middle elements, which is the stuff above that you saw, all these little fellas up, all these, are two of them, but yeah, this little very quick bit of sci-fi content up here. And that's very sort of middly in the sound. So now we've got uh, a low kick drum and a high uh, click element. Um, kick drum, I'm going to... Uh, normally, I'd probably do this with uh, Fab Filter EQ if I was doing it properly. I'm just doing it fast now. I'm just going to reshape that because I I don't want too much in this mid area here. We want to keep these sounds light and airy, uh, and this sort of a uh, 200 to 1k area um, can be muddy, and um, elements from different sounds going to collect in that frequency range and start getting really muddy, and they sum up in an ugly way. So if you can scoop them, then scoop them. I'm also going to add a nice little sub to this this is bx sub filter um <clears throat> i think it's free uh which is cool it's a very musical little um uh low end shaper um let's just hear what that sounds like is that all right oh shit that's loud all right okay hold on um let's turn that right down see and those two and let's take a little bit of the middle out of that uh the other the other way around for this i'm going to basically high pass it just by um scooping here like i said uh this is stuff i would do in a, in a much less crass way if i was doing this properly but this is just a quick demo see now i don't know if it'll sound good but it might sound good here we go this is it with the flavor elements there see I think maybe the clicks a little high. Let's bring that down a bit. There, that's a nice UI sound. So um, <clears throat> let's just add one last little element here, which will be a little bit of, um, uh, this is master bus stuff. I'm gonna add, this is uh, just a little go-to tool that I love. And um, for UI sounds, it's great because it just adds real uh, thick color to stuff. Um, I've got myself a preset that I use for a lot of stuff. Uh, this is, sorry, this is um, uh, Shep's Parallel Particles by Waves. Uh, waves, obviously, are old school, uh, really standard um, uh, su supplier of, of plugins and stuff for video game work and things like that. Um, they do really good deals all the time. If you've got, you see something on there uh, that's like a zillion billion pounds, just wait because they always have really huge sales. Where they take like a thousand percent off. That's a lot of. Um, uh, exaggeration in the last statement. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. Uh, so yeah, and then I'm just going to stick on a quick little limiter, which will be uh, Fab Filters Glorious Pro L. Uh, Fab Filter can do no wrong. Basically, they're freaking amazing. Uh, I'm just going to go. I, I know I like this stylish around limiting because it's got a nice name. Um, and I'm going to set my output to minus two. Let's just. Did I just set that to minus forty eight? No, I didn't. Okay. Um, let's move out the way so we can see what we're doing here. But let's have a quick look, see if this... See, it's not touching. Maybe we can just bump the gain up a little bit, but we're not touching the limiter yet. There we go. Um, I think that's probably it. I think that gives you a... Good... I don't need to make a full suite of these things, but... But uh, actually, just as a quick example, look, if I take these, and then if I were to pitch this one... Um, I'm... This is just an example of the language. So I'm going to pitch this down. Hey, that was the uh, that was the four notes from um, 
um, um, um, The Shining, wasn't it? Da, 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 da. I think it was. Uh, look into that, uh, Google it. it. There's a lot of history and interesting stuff about it. Sorry, that was a massive sideline. So um, I'm going to make this top one a bit longer and maybe just take the front off it for a bit of difference. And I've pitched this one down. Let's see if this now sounds like uh, a usable different UI. So there's our base one and we just made it's a bit actually recognizable it's the same thing let's move move it a bit just see if that's any good there you go so you so you now got something that feels like it's it's flavor is the same it's feedback is still good but there's a, like a this could be like a maybe uh unselecting like the first one is uh yeah select um uh gun for your ship and then unselect gun for your ship there's a language to it so there we go. Uh, we have language, we have feedback, we have flavor, and we have a little bit of mastering. That's uh, the key ingredients when I'm designing UI stuff. I really hope that's been helpful to you. And um, there we go. Let's summarize, shall we? So there we go. Um, I know that's a little bit rough and ready, but I wanted to keep it to a manageable short amount of time. So just a quick example of how those elements combine. Just to summarize again, the three things you need to remember for UI sounds is one, flavor, make sure that it's in line with the game and sells the experience and what the players should expect when they get into it. Two, it was feedback. Feedback is making sure that the actual experience of clicking all those buttons and things being unlocked or whatever is super satisfying. It could be done with um, uh, a lot of uh, bass sounds and high end. The bracketing is the thing to remember there. I think is very important. You've got your flavor in the middle, bracket on both sides with the feedback. And then there's a language. Um, is it obvious if this is positive or negative, if the player's unlocking something, or if um, it's a warning, all that kind of stuff. Super, super important. And then finally, just um, adding little flourishes like, like I did with the reverb, making sure that you've got some color and depth and texture to your sounds in the UI and that it's cleanly mastered in a way that's sympathetic with the music and any other front end UI elements that might be there. Uh, make sure that you don't over compress it or squash it. Just touch the limiter or keep it below. Uh, and conversely, um, don't just make them ridiculous, ridiculously quiet and non-existent. It's just, there's no point. It's like, you're supposed to be making something creative and fun and vibrant to listen to. So even if your game is quite serious and quite dark, those sounds can, you can put a lot of work into them, get them just right, but just make sure they're there and they're meaningful and they're interesting. Um, if you have any games in particular that you think had really cool UI sounds that, that please put it in the comments. It'd be really cool to discuss with you guys about um, what you thought about those those various games and what uh, lessons you took from them and stuff like that. And if you have any other questions about UI stuff or if there's any other elements of, of game sound design you'd like me to talk about, then I'm happy to do so. Just put it in the comments and um, we'll chat through it. And of course, please like and subscribe. I'm really trying to grow my channel and actually add some content now. So uh, the more people following, you know, the more stuff I can, I can do and spend time working on it. Um, it's been a pleasure as always. Catch you guys later.